AirPods 3 on the horizon, the 2020 iPhone rumors that'll make you want to skip out on the iPhone 11, and big MacBook news. It's a busy week for Apple, so let's get right to it. First up, AirPods. Apple's release of the second generation AirPods back in March pretty much dashed all hopes of us getting some more exciting features this year that we'd been hearing about from the rumors, like noise cancellation, waterproofing, but now it seems like they may be back on the table. According to Wedbush analyst Daniel Ives, not related to Johnny Ives, cited in Mac rumors, Apple will launch its third generation AirPods, so those AirPods 3, before the end of this year. And they're shaping up to be everything we'd wanted in those AirPods sequels. The report mentions design changes, which could suggest maybe a sportier look for the AirPods or new color options, noise cancellation, and water resistance. Although I would argue that even without an official IP rating, the existing models already proved to be able to survive their share of splashes, dunks, and well, even a trip to the washing machine. Just don't try that at home. And this is by no means the first time we've heard rumblings about AirPods 3 coming this year, as Mac rumors suggest. Bloomberg's Mark Gurman called it, longtime Apple analyst Ming-Chi Kuo called it, and Taiwanese site Digitimes called it earlier this year as well. The only thing we're not hearing about in this recent report are those biometric sensors. But against my better judgment, I would have to say that there is a good chance that those AirPods 3 are gonna happen before 2019 is over. And if you just bought AirPods 2, then this news kinda sucks. <laughs> Next up, iPhones, yet another product we're expecting in 2019. And as much as I hate to say it, we're getting even more reports that Apple is eliminating 3D Touch in the 2019 iPhone lineup. This week, it's a report from Digitimes citing industry sources. Don't be too upset yet because based on that iOS 13 code, we know that 3D Touch functionality will remain to some extent in the new phones. So don't rule it out completely, but it may be more of a haptic touch-like functionality, kind of like what we saw in the iPhone XR last year rather than proper 3D touch. But that said, we won't have to wait long to find out because the Apple event is about two months away at this point. Although right now, it's the 2020 iPhone models that are stealing the spotlight. We haven't even seen this year's lineup and we're already getting just as many rumors about the next generation of iPhones as we are from this year's, which is either a testament of how good they're going to be, a testament of how bad Apple is at keeping secrets nowadays, or how bad this new upgrade cycle is gonna be. A report from JP Morgan analysts cited in CNBC this week backs up a lot of what we've been hearing about for the 2020 iPhone models, in addition to some new information. So next year's iPhones will come in three different sizes. A smaller 5.4 inch option, that same 6.1 inch option, and a larger 6.7 inch display, all OLED screens this time around. And at least two out of the three models will come equipped with 5G connectivity. Or as this report suggests, all three sizes could come with 5G connectivity, and then that 6.1 inch model would have a non 5G option, which would obviously be cheaper. Now the new-ish rumor about the camera suggests that the rear-facing camera would have 3D mapping technology similar to the depth sensing face ID setup on the front camera. This would greatly enhance its AR and VR capabilities, which we know Apple has been pushing for. Early rumors suggested we were going to see this type of technology in the iPhone 11, but later on it was revealed that Apple had to push it back a year. The report also forecasts an uptick in sales in 2020 driven by all these new features, which is a stark contrast to the slowdown of recent years in iPhone sales and mobile phone sales in general, and rightfully so. At this point, with 5G on the way, the only reason not to hold out for the 2020 iPhones would be the better camera in the iPhone 11, the potential for that in-screen Touch ID and maybe battery life if it really is that much better, or if you legit have no choice. But maybe Apple will prove me wrong. What feature, if any, would make you upgrade this year? Apple dropped a lot of MacBook news on us this week. Some good, some not so good, depending on whether or not you were in the market for a 12-inch MacBook. So here's a breakdown of what you need to know. Apple got rid of the 12-inch MacBook and the $999 non-retina screen MacBook Air. 
That's the bad news. The good news is Apple lowered the cost of a new MacBook Air to $1,099 or $999 if you happen to be a college student and added True Tone to its display. It also added some new perks to the 13-inch MacBook Pro lineup. So now, if you get the cheapest model, it will come with that Touch Bar and Touch ID. They all have new CPUs and they include Apple's new T2 security chip. And if you're a student, it's discounted to $1,199. A few more perks for students that Apple announced this week include free Beats headphones with the purchase of qualifying Mac notebooks or iMacs, and unrelated to Macs, but still a perk for students, Apple has extended the free trial period for Apple Music from three months to six months for students. I know it's a lot to digest, but you can check out all the details on CNET.com or just shoot me your questions on Twitter or on YouTube. That's it for this week's show, but make sure to tell me what iPhone 11 feature, if any, would entice you to upgrade and check back with me next week for more Apple Core. See you then.